Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Makes and today I'm going to be making a dice box in the shape of a treasure chest. This is kind of perfect if you're always carrying around uh, several sets of dice for tabletop gaming. I'm going to be using this nice little wooden blank with metal um, closures and I want to make the lid of the box usable as a small rolling tray. So I'm cutting out a piece of foam core and sort of measuring and fitting it into the lid so that it becomes flat. Also, I want to uh, insert a divider into the box so that there's space for the dice and space for a miniature. Of course, to be able to work properly on the box, I'm going to have to take off the hinges and the closure. And I'm also sanding the edges and any rough bits that may have been left over from the fabrication process. And I'm base coating the entire raw wooden piece into a um, thick layer of brown acrylic paint. I actually gave it another coat off camera. It's always so satisfying to apply the first coat and change the color of something, isn't it? Maybe it's just me, but even as a child, that was one of my favorite things about coloring books, filling in the spaces. <laughs> Okay, with the base coat done, I can glue in those um, foam core pieces. I'm trying to make sure that um, the rolling tray part is level. And also the divider is straight. I used hot glue for this. Now, a um, big feature on this box is that I'm going to be felt lining it. This is only like the third time I've done anything like this and this time I wanted it to be very precise. So I'm marking and measuring um, and fit testing a lot. And I'm using um, PVA glue to attach the felt to the wood and the foam core. It's quite satisfying to have those pieces fit in so neatly um, when you're finally gluing them in. So I'm just cutting and measuring and being really careful not to have any gaps. I'm sort of using um, dark green colored felt um, so that it will match the exterior design that I'm planning for this box. I did double up the felt in one place, um, but that's that was sort of necessary to make sure that I have those really neat edges. And of course I'm going to let this dry for a couple of hours. After it dried, I applied um, dry brushing of this really light brown and you'll see I'll go all around with it and it becomes very streaky. Now sometimes I don't mind this aesthetic but it didn't really fit my vision. Um, on this box but I kept going thinking that mm, maybe I'll still find it by the by the time the whole thing is done but mm, no it, it wasn't good so instead I used two different browns um, 
a nice light one and a dark chocolate color and I'm sort of mixing them right on the brush and um, applying them in quite a thick coat making this sort of um, uh, subtle color variation and a lot warmer and richer tone and I think this works a lot better than what I tried before and of course I'm painting both of the pieces okay so for the decoration I decided to use some silk leaves these are really nice they probably were die cut in a factory somewhere and they have these veins uh, pressed into them that are so great at picking up um, detail and I separated them from their wire stems and I base coated them with the dark green um, that matches the color of the felt that I used While the leaves are drying, I am using some gold paint to rub all over um, the box with my finger. This time, because I'm using my finger, it's not so streaky, but it's still picking up all the wood grain and uh, it just makes it look really nice also makes it look a little bit magical and at the end of the day it's for a fantasy game so a little bit of magic vibe is always welcome uh, after the leaves have dried from that base coat i am using an olive green and my finger to apply it um, all over the leaves and as you can see um, that molding on them makes it pick up the paint really really nicely and brings out that texture of the leaves I ended up um, not doing anything more to them uh, I didn't want to put gold on anything else besides the wood itself and I'm using PVA glue to attach the silk leaves all around the box. This time I'm going for a symmetrical pattern, which is not something I often do, especially not with organic shapes. Well, first of all, I admit, because it's not easy to pull off. And secondly, because, well, plants never really grow um, in a symmetrical way but the shape of this box was demanding that I do something symmetrical because I had these quite uniform leaves um, to work with um, it wasn't that hard and I just sort of came up with an arrangement as I was going along as you can see, I'm trying to figure out how I want them to be lying. Of course, I'm like marking the center and trying my best to be neat. If I'm going for symmetrical, might as well do it properly. And as you can see, I'm like switching from working uh, with the bottom piece and the top piece, sort of giving um, the PVA glue a chance to grab onto those surfaces. And I'm also uh, pressing with my hands. I'm using uh, undiluted uh, PVA glue. Um, it works pretty fast and it dries pretty fast and it's uh, very stable. So yeah and I'm just um, arranging them in a sort of pattern that's kind of pleasing. I'm playing with the smaller leaves. I knew the larger ones would never fit here on these curved sides, so that's why I prepared the smaller ones. And I ended up 
um, adding only four of those small ones on the lid. I'm also attaching some flowers. These are a sort of iridescent from red to green. And I'm also attaching some rhinestones uh, to the middles of those flowers. And because um, these are sort of plasticky, I'm actually using uh, solvent glue instead of uh, PVA glue. Uh, PVA glue is really good and it works on everything except shiny plastic. And there it is. I just attached five little flowers on the top and one each on the curved sides. And of course, I'm trimming the excess of those leaves um, that overhang so that the box is nice and flush at the bottom. And all that remains now is to reattach the hinges and the closure. This time it was really nice because the box came with um, the hardware that was this sort of old brass color that was really nice and it went with the gold. So there it is. My little dice box is finished. I think it's nice and functional, uh, especially with the rolling tray and the divider, but also it's pretty, but it doesn't have a lot of elements that might snag on things on transport. So that's why I opted for a little bit of a simpler design. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Um, if you enjoy this sort of content, I have a lot more videos on my channel and I always upload new ones every week. Uh, so please consider subscribing if you liked this. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye.